Hi, I'm Mills. I'm the best voting musician internet celebrity the world has ever known. And you're listening to the MBS show, my favorite podcast. Um, yeah. Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 25. I'm your host, Tom Alfonso. Joining me today is Emilio Daniel. What's up? Ah, hello. Hi, Mr. Loud Pony. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> mm, I'm thinking by today. I'm crazy. Mm, hello. Okay, then. So, joining us today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Emilio. Where have you been? Working! Okay. okay. So, how are you, Daniel? Oh, I'm good. Just got back from a recording session earlier. We were totally wasted after it. And our guest for this week is a talented brony musician. Mels, how are you? Uh, doing good, doing good. Uh, glad to be here and everything. Anything interesting happened to you today? Um, today, not really. Today's been probably one of the most um, uneventful days of my life, sitting in my room playing video games. Sounds well, interesting. It's going to become eventful very soon. So before we start the show, we have four basic questions for you. And question number one is, who's your favorite pony? Um, let's see. I have, um, let's see. I, ma- I wrote a love song for Twilight Sparkle. Um, I have a shirt that says I have a crush on Twilight Sparkle. The wallpaper on my phone, PS3, and both screens of my computer are Twilight Sparkle. I've got a Twilight Sparkle um, toy on my backpack that I carry around everywhere. I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of a Fluttershy kind of guy. But seriously, no, uh, Twilight Sparkle is best pony. <laughs> okay, uh, why Twilight? Gee, I, I, um, you know, I kind of been into this um, many times. I had to uh, explain this. It's kind of weird. But me and my friend Kuroshia, if you've heard of him, we kind of went over this thing where um, your favorite pony, especially as a guy, um, you can't help but kind of, regardless of how interesting you think their character is, um, when it comes to ponies, you kind of, feel like um, your favorite pony kind of has to do with all the characteristics you find in a dream girl. And, um, you know, Kuroshia kind of talks about Rainbow Dash, and I kind of talked about Twilight Sparkle. You know, she's kind of got all the... She's intelligent. She's a huge dork, a bigger dork than I am. She's cute as all hell. Um, that's kind of all I can really say about it. I mean, after watching all the episodes, I suppose I've grown some sort of kinship with her. And um, it's really nice. I, I like Twilight Sparkle. Okay, cool. Interesting answer. So, what's your favorite episode? That's, um, that's a tough one to answer without being biased uh, as to saying the Cantalot Wedding. Um, if I'm allowed to say that. Oh, I mean, if I'm not allowed to say Cantalot Wedding, I'll, I'll try to pick something else. Oh, sure. I mean, the Cantalot Wedding is awesome. Okay, let's... Yeah, I guess who chose a whole season as his favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my thing behind Cantalot Wedding is that um, I mean, obviously, the production values were just absolutely it's sky, sky high. You know, I, I showed my mom. I showed my mom, and uh, she legitimately thought it was some sort of like uh, Disney um, kind of thing. It, it, it took cues from Lion King. It took cues from like Star Wars. It had a huge epic scale, and of course, they really took advantage of the characters and you know making you act. Even if you hadn't watched uh, Ponies before, you'd actually feel Twilight. They did. She, they really took advantage of her character and how she's very protective over her friends and her brother, which is another thing I kind of wanted to bring up, is that long before the episode came out, they were talking about Shining Armor and Cadence. And uh, people were like, oh, you know, they're just trying to put them in just to sell the toys and everything. And when they put them in, and they had the chemistry between Twilight and Shining Armor. I'm like, wow, this is really legit. I actually believe they're brother and sister. So I really like what they did with Shining Armor. I really like how they had the uh, relationship between Shining Armor and Cadence. It's a lot better than what they had with Big Mac and Cheryl Lee. It was very mature. You know, it's kind of something that I thought the show needed. And um, overall, it was a really good episode. 10 out of 10, A++ game of the year. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, awesome. Uh, Fun fact, um, Mel's, if you didn't know, the voice actor that played Shining Armor is the same voice actor that played Rayburn. Whoa, really? Yep. Wow, that kind of changes... That kind of changes my stance on Shining Armor. (laughs) (laughs) How how do you find all these things out? It was was way back when. You, You need to be a hardcore fan. Welcome to work! I'm not, it shows that I'm not hardcore enough, wow. 
<laughs> no, I, I just heard something. From my cast rear view mirror. I just heard something on the some other shows that I can't remember. I, I don't think so. Or I just wiki it. Anyway, um, the third question is: How did you become a fan of the show? A lot of people don't entirely believe me because, um, well, uh, what a lot of people have been saying is, I remember uh, Tombstone telling me that he kind of got it from 4chan or, you know, they post ponies all over the place and they kind of get into it as a joke and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was just legitimately bored in the middle of my um, uni semester. I'm like, what do I do? I kind of needed a new TV show to watch. I finished watching... What was I watching at that time? I can't even remember. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Awesome. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I only just started watching Fresh Prince at that time. I still haven't even finished season two. Anyway, um, I was like, um, I heard of Adventure Time. A lot of my friends were big fans of Adventure Time. And then I heard some of the fans of Adventure Time, like My Little Pony, and they were like, oh, it's a really good show and everything. I'm like, okay, I suppose I'll give it a look. I didn't actually think twice about it being My Little Pony. I mean, Disney cartoons are really good, and I know what they can do with the license if it's really good. So I just gave it a look. I didn't know anything about it. I kind of watched it. I'm like, this is actually a pretty good show. I'm very impressed. You know, I'm I'm actually really impressed with what they're doing with animation today. And I find out it's Lauren Faust. I'm like, holy crap, this is Lauren Faust. She's my she's my childhood hero. She kind of made all the cartoons that I grew up on. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how I became a fan of the show. And then how I got into Brony music was kind of a different story after that. Okay, we'll get into that later. But yeah. um, your story of how you became a fan of a show, um, it's not the first. We had guests um, who got bored and watched ponies. So what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, actually, to be honest, um, there were some of them that just didn't care at all. I mean, it's just a TV show. Who cares? Some of them were like, I actually got... Um, fairly mixed to reactions. Some of my aunts were like, oh, you know, who's your favorite pony? You like a little girl show that even uh, my four-year-old daughter doesn't like or whatever. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you can blow it out your ear or something. I don't know. I said something really rude or whatever. But um, yeah, it was kind of mixed reactions. A lot of them were kind of freaked out. And then I kind of reminded them, hey, you know, I watch Disney cartoons and I'm still a, fan, a big fan of SpongeBob SquarePants and everything. And then when I started doing Brony music, that's when everyone in my family shut up and they were just cheering me on. They were like, keep doing more, come up with your album and everything. And I'm like, okay. So now when I'm as popular as popular can be, making my mark in my society, <laughs> now is when you want to start cheering me on. I see what you did there. <laughs> yep. yep. I like that. <laughs> okay, so that's family. What do your friends think? Um, my friends actually didn't think much of it. Some of them, I, I remember one of my friends was like, how can you like a show like this? This is for little girls. I'm like, oh, but it's really good. And um, some of them were close-minded. Some of them, like Kuroshia, were like, oh, what's this? Um, uh, so I gave Kuroshia the first episode. He kind of got hooked and he became the Brony musician internet celebrity you see today. I converted a lot of my friends to Bronies and the ones who didn't get converted were like, oh, you know, respect and everything. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever, respect. And the funny thing is that Ponies actually really helped me in finding out who my real friends were because as soon as I started spamming Ponies and everything, a lot of, my, a lot of people on my Facebook friends list were like, oh, you know, you like a show for little girls. I, I, I don't have respect for you anymore. I'm going to delete you. And I'm like... Yeah, okay, I don't care. You know, if you're, if you're going to judge me like that just because I like a show, then why are we even friends in the first place? So, yeah, that, that really helped me come out of my shell. Awesome. Yeah, good. So, actually, did you become a brony when you were here in Malaysia or when you were in Australia already? I was in Australia because, um, actually, the first time I ever actually knew anything of the show was when I was at a LAN party. Uh, if anyone um, is studying at Curtin University in Perth, that they have a red flag LAN um, every so-and-so months, and everyone basically brings their own computer. I remember getting up to go to the bathroom for a short while, and I kind of saw uh, ponies on the screen, and I'm like, oh, that looks like a nice animation. And um, I didn't think much of it until I was actually told from one of the Adventure Time fans. Okay, yeah. cool. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news topic. So, in news topic, where L gives a shout out to the Bronies and a possible appearance on the show. Recently, William Anderson met up with his old friend Will L at his concert. During their talk, Will asked L if 
he would like to give a shout out to all his MLP Brony fans. And so, where else said hi to all his fans and also said that he might be on the show. So, links can be found in the show notes. What do you think? Him on show. Possible? Well, more than possible. Can you imagine Weird Al as a pony? <laughs> oh my god, look at... Imagine their hair, dude. Their mare, their hair. The voice. <laughs> you just put MLP on in somebody's house and they'll realize, Hey, wait, that's Weird Al. What show is this? <laughs> that's Weird Al. But seriously, how many people know Weird Al? I know Weird Al. And I mean, I know person. Weird Al. It's just that I'm, I don't know how many people actually know Mel, do you know Weird Al? Well, he's kind of become a household name. I mean, I remember when he first got on TV, and I just had to mention his name, and my mom was like, oh, you mean that funny guy that makes fun of everyone's music? Uh, yeah, I know who that is. Uh, he was on The Simpsons once, I remember. I mean, if you're not the type who is obnoxious and only have, like, the Billboard Top 40 on your iPod, you're most likely going to know him, you know? I mean, he's pretty cool. I mean, to be honest, he's pretty much a musical genius when you think about him. It's like... To change songs like the American Pie song to be perfectly sing as a story about Star Wars, how do you do that? It seems that everybody's positive about this. Imagine yep, that yep. even he might even parody a song, maybe the theme. Think about it. <laughs> Make parody of it. I don't think so. I mean, okay, if he were to be on the show, okay, here's my prediction about where El being on the show. He's going to be one of Pinkie Pie's relative. I can actually see that happening. Wow. So he's totally going to sing, My Little Human. No, no, no. He's just going to be one of... <laughs> he's going to be... not for the show, but he might just do that for fun. <laughs> Could be, but my prediction is he's going to be Pinkie Pie's uncle that just dropped into town from um, whatever pony town there is on the map right now. The rock Farm. <laughs> no, no Rock Farm. He comes from Los Pegasus. And ah, he... That makes sense. And he comes to Pinkie Pie just to say hello and... Causes a lot of trouble. I'm just babbling right now. Okay, let's move on. So, Mina, why don't you read this one? Alright, let's take this one. Bioware gives a statement on Pony Post. A little around last week ago, we reported that the Mass Effect Facebook page posted a picture of Commander Pinkie Pie. Now, there was a lot of mixed reactions to it, the post. Some of them being positive to write out negative. In the following days... Bioware gave a statement to that Facebook post. And here are some of parts of the statements. Some fans felt compelled to unlike their page, while others even went as far as to post their intention to sell all their Mass Effect games. Bioware thinks that fans are their extended part of their family. And as within any family, there are bound to be times when they don't see eye to eye. Bioware supports the community's desire to be creative and share with them. They try to showcase as many of them as they can and hope that the community will find it all as fascinating as they do. And they hope that everyone will remember it's the fans' feedbacks that will help them shape the community. But, you know, you're going to catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So, Bioware is saying, be good to one another, which is all statements made by... David Hollegard, uh, Bioware Social Media Coordinator. So, what does everyone think about this whole debacle on the Mass Effect page? I can give my two cents on it, uh, personally. Is that, I'm, okay, This it's no, it's no secret, and I post about this uh, many times on my uh, Tumblr page, is that I haven't seen eye to eye with Bioware for the longest time. Is that I, I generally didn't really like. I played through Mass Effect two, and I'm still in the middle of three. I don't entirely like those games, so I can't say anything about the games themselves. But what I can say is that I've got a lot of respect for Bioware, uh, especially with the drama that happened with Mass Effect three. If anyone remembers, when uh, one or two days after the game, the game came out, and people started finishing the game, and everyone was like, "Oh, the ending is crap," or whatever. You know, I mean, everyone started getting real, you know, upset over the ending. I'm not gonna uh, give it away or anything. Mm. Uh, but um, don't, don't worry, uh, we all remember that that day because uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people don't, don't really don't know remember. I, I just remember being like uh, on Tumblr, everyone was ranting and raving about it. It's like, oh, how could you do this to us? We made so many decisions and everything and you just give us this. What Bioware does with their games is what they do and we're in no right to ask of anything. Um, we're no, in no right to expect anything. 
And um, what they did after that, when they listened to the fans and made an extended cut and made the ending, you know, just for the fans because everyone was uh, complaining about it. And they, they just wanted to please them. They just wanted to reach out to their fans. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I have a lot of respect for. And, you know, of course, I have respect for developers like Treyarch who co- always seem to have some sort of um, connection with their Call of Duty fan base, always listen to them for, like, balancing issues and everything. When it comes to developers like that that listen to their fans, I have so much respect. But then it comes to the other way where Bioware wants to do something like post up a picture of Pinkie Pie. You know, they just want to have a little bit of fun. I thought it was really funny. It was cute. And the fans are like, oh, yeah, I want to sell my games. Mass Effect is terrible now because it's got to do with ponies. It's like Bioware listens to the fans, but the fans aren't allowed to listen to Bioware. That's kind of double standard, if you ask me. True that. Okay, for the ending, well, I've played through the unedited version and... There were some plot holes to it, but if you know about the indoctrination theory, it all makes sense. Actually, I haven't finished it. I'm only like six hours into it. Okay, cool. Um, here's the thing. Yeah. Have you downloaded the update yet? Um, I think so. I played online once. Ah, a few weeks ago. snapped. Anyway, um, go finish the game first. After finishing, go look on YouTube for the indoctrination theory. That okay. shall explain a lot about the game. You know, I genuinely can't complain about the game because it was given to me for free. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, back to ponies. Well, BioWare did well with their statement, and well, we they have a lot of fans. Some of their fans like wrestling. Some of their fans like Dragon Ball Z, and maybe some fans like Strawberry Shortcake. So I mean, the Brony Co- I just have so much respect that, that they're just you know going out of their way to make sure all their fans are happy. True, indeed. I mean, it's just a picture. It's just a picture of Pinkie Pie. I mean, if somebody were to post a picture of Strawberry Shortcake dressed up as one of the N7 armor people, pe- people are not going to go crazy. I mean, it's just ah, uh, it's just stupid. It's just a picture, really. I mean, it's really creative. I found it like wow, the game actually cares about the Brony community. But technically, if you're if the fans of a game really can't respect the game, why are they still playing it? I got no idea, really, because to say that they are hardcore fans of the game is... How do I put this? I mean, they just put a picture up. They didn't say, like, Pinkie Pie update coming soon. <laughs> True. No, I would play you that. Want, you want to know what I actually find kind of weird is that why, it, why are the Bioware fans getting all upset for this when... What about the Valve fans? I mean, Dave Newell actually openly said... And I... I don't think I've ever heard any of the Valve fans and any of the TF2 or Counter-Strike players going, oh, Gabe Newell is a brony, I'm going to stop playing my Steam account or something. <laughs> you know why? Because they spend too much money on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't complain. Oh, how much money did everyone spend for the summer sale recently, huh? Oh, uh, too busy with ponies. I mean, even you just look at TF2, there's Balloonicorn in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's such... Um, it's such- in front of, it's, so, it's so close right in front of our noses and you know that game had something to do with it. You don't even need to ask. Yeah, I remember when we meet the, meet the pack. Oh. Everyone on Tumblr was like, oh my god, it's a pony. Oh my god, it's Twilight Sparkle. Oh my god, oh my god. Calm down, guys. This is Team Fortress 2. If you, if you read their descriptions of Balloonicon, it's actually really funny. <laughs> I just haven't taken a look at that. I suppose. Because they actually now sell the actual inflatable Balloonicon. And if you wow. read the description, it's actually three feet tall. It's one meter tall. Oh boy. And if you buy it, it says that you don't mind helping Balloonicon pick up some smokes on the way home. He's totally cool for it. <laughs> he's, he's waiting to have some money wired to him. He just needs a place to crash for two or three days. <laughs> awesome. You know, they're not going to just say, premiums now available from Team Fortress 2. Now keep it in your home. That'll be so... Uh, right? And basically, they're just selling something and they put so much effort into making it nice. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. In today's guest time, our guest for this week is a very talented Brony musician. He has made a lot of original songs, and he has even done a collaboration with Kuroshia. We are proud to introduce you, Mel's. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. So, how have you been? Liking the episode? I'm having a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of stuff that I've been meaning to touch on myself, but I suppose now that I've uh, gotten the chance to be in a podcast and actually talk about this, I've gotten my word out, so 
this is actually a lot of fun. I'm ho- hoping to do a lot more of these. Sure, it's fun talking to you for the what first hour <laughs> previously not recorded. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, we do it every week with our guests. Daniel, you got anything to ask? Uh, yeah, basically, I asked the standard questions that I always ask. I know Mills is not your real name, so how did you come up with the name Mills? Um, is it pronounced uh, Mills or Mills? Mills, uh, M E E L Z. It's uh, because my name is Emil, E M I L. So that kind of just spinned off Emil. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What, 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 what do you say your real name was? Emil. Yeah, I know we have the same name. So Mills. So, yeah. You're uh, saying. I kind of just spinned off uh, Emil, Neil, Mills, Mills. Yeah, I was just really bored one day. I was like, okay, I'll play with my name and come up with something really cool and hip that no one else on the internet used before. Well, Mills is a unique name. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually almost going to call myself Miles, but I'm like, too many people use the name Miles. <laughs> Miles Taylor Fowler. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For all the Sonic fans who know. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, do you have a pony sauna? Um, I've got my, um, OC, um, something I kind of wanted to note about my OC, I'll give you the image link, uh, right now, is that a lot of people like role-playing and stuff, and, um, I know especially Kaboshi kind of likes to come up with an alter ego for his, uh, pony, and people are asking me, oh, is Meals just the name of your pony? And I'm like, no, Meals is kind of me, and my pony Sona is literally me, if I just went into the machine and turned me into a pony, that's pretty much it there's not much I can say about it and um yeah it's just very generic bland and that's kind of why I am generic and bland oh I oh, noticed okay. the cutie marks is interesting yeah, um, the cutie marks very interesting so where did you get the idea for it, it looks like a dance dance revolution uh, <laughs> yeah because um when I first got into ponies I was actually playing a lot of uh, In the Groove which is basically uh, dance dance revolution on steroids I was um fairly competitive uh, on that game and I made step charts for that which is kind of how I got into uh, Bernie Music sort of but that's a different story but anyway I was just really into that game so my mentality behind the key mark was not only am I in the game but um, I'm very into music and I'm very into interaction with music so kind of the arrow represents you know the interaction between a human and music. So, like, you know how Dance Dance Revolution is generally uh, playing along with the music. So I kind of thought that was kind of a neat idea. Awesome. Wow. So um, here are some questions from me. So how would you describe your music? That's a very, very hard question. And because um, I do a whole bunch of genres, uh, rock, rap, I've even dabbled in orchestral Um but, I mean, of course, a lot of people are going to say that my trademark song would be Song for Twilight. And um, I'm not even quite sure how you can... Because some people call it pop pop, some people call it... Uh, when I was put on rock band, uh, I checked the genre and people, um, they listed it as uh, alternative. Um, I'm like, I kind of just call myself rock. That's pretty much the best way to describe what I do. I, I'm a rock musician, and that's what I do, yeah. Oh, so basically rock. I, I could hear that, I could hear that. So besides the guitar, do you play any other musical instruments? Uh, yeah, um, I play the bass, um, drums, um, uh, and this is something that a lot of people don't know, um, which I kind of put in the uh, description, but, uh, but um, a lot of people ask me, you know, who's playing drums or bass for your um, music, but... Um, um, especially for a song for Twilight and Nightmare Night Metal Mix, that I I did the I did all of the uh, instruments for um, both of those songs. I did the uh, drums, guitar, bass. But generally, I um, generally my main instrument is the bass. I'd have to say. Oh, a one pony musician. Cool. So, how long does it take for you to finish a track? That's actually um, a very subjective question. I'm going to. Uh, take two examples. Uh, Caramel's Light, which is a cover of Pony One Kenobi's song. If you don't know who that is, go and Google that right now and check him out. Uh, he's I really brilliant. Too. Yeah, uh, he's part of a Beatles movies. And uh, of course, Song for Twilight. Song for Twilight was actually in production for months and months. I remember coming back on a date with a girl and I kind of wrote a bass line. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to put this in my computer. And um, after 
a few months, I got into the studio and finally put everything together. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to make this a love song for Twilight Sparkle, you know. And uh, Caramel's Light, which was a cover of 21 Kenobi's song, I literally put it together within two hours. I was like, okay, I, I, I need something to do with my time. And I'm not going to let 21 Kenobi serenade Twilight any better than I did. So, no, no, no one takes Twilight. No, she's my mind, right? <laughs> this, this, okay, if you're looking at cats listening to this, I'm like, back off. You've got Mixie. I've got Twilight. <laughs> this means war. <laughs> she's my waifu, not your waifu. I feel <laughs> once upon a time in a galaxy far, far, far away. So, <laughs> so it all depends on what you're doing then. So if you're doing a, if you're doing a, what you call that, a cover track, you, you could it will take you like two hours or maybe a if day. It's a cover track. It, um, again, of course, it all depends um, because Caramel's Light was a. Um, rock songs to begin with all I had to do is kind of make it faster and put a different uh, drum beat but if it's something like when I did Nightmare Night that took a bit of planning to turn it from an electronic song because Wooden Toaster is an electronic artist to turn that into a new metal song um, that took a bit of planning and everything but um, it all has to do with how long it takes for me to write and come up with ideas and how long it takes for me to get all the stuff together and get into the studio and then how long it takes for me to sit at the computer and make sure everything sounds, you know, like as if I didn't record it with a hand on microphone. Okay, so it all depends on what you're doing then. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, cool. So my last question is, what was your reaction when I invited you on the show? Wow, someone actually is interested in me. This is flattering. <laughs> oh, really? You mean you never had anybody else interview you before? Well, I I was on Australia on air once, and um, I was asked a couple of questions to be put on a Brony music database. But other than that, I actually haven't had all that much attention. I'll be honest that um, when it comes down to attention grabbing, Karoshi does a lot better than that uh, uh, at that than I am. I kind of see myself as um, the rush. Um, I, I, I see myself as what Rush is to mainstream music as I am to Brony music, is that Rush, if you don't know who they are, they're a progressive rock uh, band uh, that came up in like the late 70s or early 80s, I can't remember. And um, they're basically the biggest cult um, band, but and they've gone as far as to have cameo appearances in like Futurama or Family Guy or something. And um, they, I don't think they've ever gotten actual mainstream uh, video attention or anything but they're incredibly popular and um, basically um, this is that's kind of how I view myself I'm friends with a lot of the musicians but when it comes down to like the top 10 uh, Brony songs of the month I don't ever see myself actually getting on there I'm like my fans are loyal and that's all I care about yeah that's about it okay cool awesome well now you're one up against Kuroshi uh, you're on a podcast <laughs> yeah, outside of Australia. Oh, there you go. Well, until I invited him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's still the first. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, no, you two people just go first. All you have, to, all, all you have to do is kind of put off his. Uh, you, you just got to put off his um, invitation as long as possible, so I can just keep going. Hey, Kuroshi. Hey, Kuroshi. Who was on MBS? Who was on MBS? That's right. That's right. Not you. <laughs> Hey, Kuroshi. Hey, Kuroshi. Hey, Kuroshi. Hey, Kuroshi. Hey, Kuroshi. Hi. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, what have, that's what I have with Glaze. That's kind of that's turned into an MLR catchphrase where it's like every time we see a mention of Carrot Top or something, we just shout on Tumblr, Hey, Glaze. Hey, Glaze. <laughs> so, he just talks about, um, because he, all he did was one song, Beyond Her Garden, where he talks about Carrot Top, and now it's like everyone's <laughs> right on the fact that he's got a huge heart on for Carrot Top. I just love ragging on him. I have to invite him someday. He <laughs> sounds so fun. <laughs> uh, well, I, I can try, but oh, oh boy. He's uh, uh, ever free right now, I think, along with uh, Mike the Microphone yelling at cats. That's why they're not returning my messages. Yeah, I, I heard. I was I was watching one of the EFR video YouTube thing. Is yeah. Glaze Australian or is he... Uh, he's a uh, British. Okay, that sounds cool. So, Daniel, got any questions for Mel's? Yeah, um, now these questions are to do with PonyCon AU, which is coming up very, very soon, actually, next year. 
not really that soon, but still quite soon. If you want to start booking your tickets, get it's on it right now. Relatively, yeah. So in one of your YouTube videos, you said that you were going to PonyCon AU. In fact, you just got up your chair and started running off. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be performing live there. So how did you get involved with that? Well, because the, um, the con is actually uh, organized by um, a combination of people, some of which being uh, Stable Free. His name is Julian, but uh, we call him Stable Free. And we've got a whole bunch of other people on the group. But basically, a lot of them kind of comprise, considering it's in Sydney, a lot of them comprise our bronies of New South Wales, which despite me not even living there, I, I'm a huge, I'm not going to say I'm a huge part of, but I involve myself a lot uh, with that group. And um, so I know who they are. Me and Julian go way back. So I kind of got on the team with uh, Kuroshia's recommendations. And so, of course, you know, Kuroshia being the um, musician that he is, kind of insisted that we have a proper music thing going. And as soon as he opened that idea, I was like, okay, I want to, I, I, I want to perform. I, I, I kind of really want, finally want the opportunity to play my original music live. I don't think I've ever had that yet. But um, yeah, that was that was kind of the idea. It was going to be really fun. Uh, that said, you know, have you ever performed um, live music? Not necessarily brony music. Uh, have you ever performed live? There was once at my school. If anyone is familiar with Beacon House to be nice, that they had a talent show at one point where I brought up a band with my classmates. Speaking of which, how you doing, Dylan? Yeah, <laughs> From just... Beacon House 3 in I, wow. Yeah, why, what's up? No, I, I, I'm, from a, I'm from another private school and every time we went there, there's a big huge banner for Beacon House 3 in I, thank you, oh, yeah. outside. Yeah, I, I, I just remember there was a whole bunch of really, really heavy advertising for the school. I'm yeah. like, wow, okay, I mean, I'm in the popular school now. We need money! <laughs> So yeah, there was that. Um, I mean, my dad also took me along to a lot of gigs because when I was 12, I used to be really into rap and stuff. And he kind of took me to these huge um, gigs to kind of go up and cover Black Eyed Peas or Eminem or something. Wow. And um, if anyone remembers, yes, I was that kid in 2004 at um, Bukit Kia, uh, Mon that was performing at the Sunrise Festival thingy. I don't remember. Um, but, like, yeah, I was I was performing at Mon in 2004. If you were ever wondering who those two rapping kids were, that was me and my brother. I remember that. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think I do. It, it, it kind of is in the back of my head. There was two kids rapping somewhere, but I... I think that, yeah, that might have been you. I think so. Yeah, because I, I also had a whole bunch of things because me and my brother did a whole bunch of gigs because my, my dad and my grandfather were really fascinated that we were doing this and we were starting to get into music. It was like, they were trying to get shows all over the place. If there was some sort of exhibition or something, it didn't even have anything to do with music. They would try to shoehorn us in so that we can cover uh, Black Eyed Peas um, and Eminem. I wow. specifically remember we were singing... Uh, in the end by Linkin Park and uh, Lose Yourself by Eminem and I'm like um, okay as long as this gets me some sort of exposure I'm in even though I'm <laughs> supposed to be studying for UPSR awesome <laughs> yeah that's a lot of support back in my day all I remember was doing all the promoting myself <laughs> so uh, have you ever performed original music before? once ever and that was just at a brony meetup in uh, Perth and I've actually got a video of that uh, performing Song for Twilight live which it was basically just, hey guys, um, any, if anyone's got an acoustic guitar, um, I can sing Song for Twilight right here, and I just grab the guitar and kind of play it. And that's pretty much as far as it goes for original music. But otherwise, no, not really. So, BronyCon AU is going to be your first exposure to live Brony music then? It's going to be my first unless I can actually bring something up together. I mean, I'm kind of caught up with a mix of... Uh, I mean, putting out the album and also unity and everything. But um, I, I would like to, if I ever get the chance to, you know, if I ever get some sort of gig, even if it's at the uh, pub at uh, at uni or something, at, at the tavern or whatever, um, you know, of course I'd go up there and sing song for Twilight. Um, you know, I, ha I have, you don't have an open but, mic night at your pub? I don't know. It's, the problem is just at finding band members and... Going up there on my own is kind of lame, and I'm also the whole stage fight deal. It's just going up there alone just kind of feels lame, if you know what I mean. I kind of want to go there with a huge band. It's like, yeah, we're, we're a team. You, you can't mess with us kind of deal. 
I can understand. I can understand. Just think yeah. yourself as Iron Will, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the PonyCon AU website, it's just that there you're a publicist. So as a publicist, what's your job? What do you do? Pretty much, I kind of help out with the uh, advertising, uh, making sure that uh, Bronies in Perth, um, the, all the Bronies in Perth know what's going on, uh, know the developments with that. Though it's a little redundant that it's kind of already being uh, advertised all over the place, but regardless, you know, I'm making sure that they know what's going on. I'm kind of talking to the uh, admins and everything in Perth. Uh, and also not to mention that when, when it comes to like uh, meetings and stuff, you know, I'm kind of there to just give, um, I mean, number one, moral support, obviously, and uh, just, you know, chipping in with ideas and everything. Um, Karoshi has actually kind of talked about how I'm, quote, unquote, his uh, wingman um, <laughs> to kind of um, help out with decisions and whatever. Basically, TLDR, I'm, I'm just kind of, um, quote, unquote, assistant. And I just kind of do whatever they need me to do. Why don't you write a theme song for PonyCon AU? That'd be cool. I should. That, that would be a good idea. So why don't you do a collab with Kurosha? I mean, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, that, that would be cool. I mean, he's um, we've done a lot of collabs uh, when it comes to rap and stuff, but um, he's also talked about wanting to get back into metal and everything as soon as he gets the resources to record his guitars and everything. Oh, um, okay. I would really love to get into uh, doing metal with him. In fact, next week when I go over to visit him, I'm going to make sure that I get his um, equipment sorted out so we can actually start doing metal. Um, but if we can actually come up with some sort of rock anthem for uh, Pony Con, that would, be, that would actually be pretty cool. Would you say party rock? Party, party rock! rock. <laughs> yeah! You just, have, you just have the entire uh, con floor, <laughs> just everyone shuffling the entire day. <sighs> Emilio, you got any questions? Yes, I have a few, actually. Uh, I hope I don't bore you with this, because it's a bit technical on the site. I noticed on... Uh, I've been watching a bit of your videos while we were waiting, and uh, I noticed on Nightmare Night yeah. that you mentioned your dad does the engineering for the song, and your little brother, V, we call the lead, the lead guitar bits. Now, uh, oh, yeah. I'm just wondering, out of curiosity, who else in your family does music? Because um, music's actually been a big part of um, my uh, my family it's that because my dad got me into music he kind of um, taught me how to play piano and everything and drums as well so well, my dad um, he's kind of a jazz musician he's kind of playing rock right now and um, every now and then when I, when I visit him you know we have our sporadic jams and um, my brother plays guitar he's really really good he did the uh, solo for Night and Night yeah, I and, uh, yeah, and uh, of course you've got my sister that plays violin, and uh, that's that's pretty much all I can say about my immediate family without going too far into their personal lives or whatever. But yeah, uh, especially on my dad's side, you've got a lot of classically trained um, musicians in there. So um, I'm just kind of the black sheep that comes out and says, "Hey, I want to do pony music." <laughs> you mean the black pony of the group? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wow, that's actually pretty cool because, you know, uh, going out as a musician, all I had to play with was myself, really. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next question. I was wondering, do you compose uh, slash songwrite on the site for Pocket Money? Here's the thing, that um, it's generally always been purely for the fun of it. Like, uh -huh. I don't... Um, I mean, of course, I would like to kind of turn it into a profession. By that, I mean probably get signed onto a label, but... It's never, it's never really about the money. I mean, you, you're gonna hear that from every musician ever, but it's legitimately n um, never for the money. But um, I've got a new uh, album coming out. Hopefully this week, if Stormwolf can finish doing um, his part of it, um, that I'm doing a collab with him. It's called EP for Twilight. Go check out. Um, I got an ad for that on my YouTube channel, which is very obscure. No one took part in the Dota 2 competition. Anyway, um, I'm hopefully hoping to I'm gonna put that on Bandcamp and hopefully I'm, I've got a friend apparently he's gonna help put it on iTunes as well and best case scenario that I might actually um, have physical copies of it so um, there's that um, hopefully probably going around five dollars or something so that would be nice if I make some sort of money out of it but um, you know I'm also going to be putting up three mirrors as well so it's like it's never about the money 
but if you want to give me money for if you want to donate that would that would still be really really cool but uh, otherwise i just really don't care i feel really sad as a musician right now because i actually, do Mills, actually Mills, if you heard our previous episode we talked to the person who's going to be creating a new brony musician network called pony.fm and uh, it's basically band camp designed for bronies no bandwidth limit no caps on uploads and it's still under development but it's going to be coming out really soon and it's going to become the music database for every free radio so you might want to get in touch nice oh I'll, i'll look into that and then we've got all, we've also got eq beats which is where uh kroshia puts his music but i i couldn't even think about how to work the thing myself so yeah uh question number 3 mills i'm really wondering what are you studying as a student in australia computer science um not much i can say beyond that except i'm doing uh, java programming and stuff so yeah Yeah, so what it is, the first time we had two people on, I mean, not two people, but uh, two guests on the show who actually studied the same thing. The previous person who studied Java programming was Jimmy Lee. <laughs> Isn't he working? Yeah, but he studied oh. Java programming. Awesome. You know, we, we, right. thought that, like, people, we thought like there would be so many diverse kinds of uh, studying, like all of us studying different stuff, and then suddenly, wow, two people studied Java programming. Is there some, is there some relationship between Java and Bronies? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll admit though cuz the whole thing kind of is a geek culture that a lot of Ronies are generally internet geeks so I'm not surprised that we've got a lot of um you know computer science uh, majors in the community so yeah Next question for me else is uh what gear do you use as standard to record music because I know a lot of uh, our listeners might be a bit into the technical stuff and I sure they would like to know this and think you I've got um okay we In terms of my musical instruments, it's kind of very sporadic. Um, I just literally use any instruments that I have around me. I, I'll use my brother's or my dad's guitar when I can, and I will use uh, the drum kits, um, my dad's drum kit if he actually has it set up. But I've got my bass guitar, five-string Ibanez. Uh, I call her Juniper. And when it comes to the drum sounds, it's either my dad's acoustic drums or I use addictive drums on Fruity Loops, which is the DAW that I use, and um, Mixcraft, which is the DAW that I use for when I do rock music. And Fruity Loops is when I do my electronic or my field attempts at dubstep. And uh, when it comes to vocals, I use a Guitar Hero microphone. Yeah, I'm not kidding. The thing really, really I, works well. I heard a lot of people say that the Guitar Hero mic works well. And I remember... Earlier episodes of Bronyville, uh, Chef Sandy used a Guitar Hero mic. Oh, sorry, uh, was it a rock band? Yeah, rock band yeah, Guitar Hero. They're, they're, the same, they're the same tech, actually. It's li- it's literally the same thing. It's a Logitech uh, USB microphone. It's just the art is different. I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm not even sure if I'm even allowed to say this. If I am, Tabi, I'm sorry, but Tabi, if you know who he is, he's another rock musician. Uh, on one of the songs, he used a Guitar Hero microphone. Uh, to record his acoustic uh, guitars. Um, so, yeah, um, it works really well. Um, it's a lot better than using the PC headset. I'll give you that. And, True, um, indeed. At, at the end of the day, you know, as long as it's not a PC headset, I'll use a guitar hero microphone, put a pop filter in front of it, and everything is just post-processing. Um, you know, no need to be careful in recording. I'll just edit in post-processing. Editing is magic. <laughs> um, so you're saying that the Guitar Hero mic is a directional condenser? I have little to zero idea of how microphones work, so I can't even answer that. I, I oh. need to buy one now, because if this is true, I've been wasting money, man. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, no, we're no, call no, you over. No. We're going to open that thing up and test it out. Funny thing, though, because I, I remember walking into Target one day, and um, I, I was looking at the uh, bargain center. Just, like It was just at the corner where they were having clearances, and they had a huge... Uh, Guitar Hero World Tour bundle for the PS2. And um, little secret in case anyone here is actually interested in getting back into the Guitar Hero since this is a good game anyway. Anyway, um, because the uh, drums work with PS3 as well, I'm like, hey, do you want to... I told my friend, do you want to split the... Uh, do you want to split it up? You know, I'll take the drums and the microphone. You can take the game and the uh, guitar. So um, we split it up. The whole box was actually $20. Awesome. I'm not even kidding. It was $20. Awesome. So, I I walked home with a Guitar Hero drums and a Guitar Hero mic that I could use for my recording for $10. Awesome. So, yes, that, that was a good day. That was a good day. That, 
is awesome. Maybe he'll just spend 400 ringgit on a mic. But the difference is, he has a really good quality mic. And the Guitar Hero mic is a really good quality one too. Um, I wouldn't I mean, say it's no, good, it's okay. I mean, okay. it's like, if it can, I mean, if it can record... Well, I mean, to, to be fair, like, the Guitar Hero microphone does pick up a lot of background uh, noise, and I kind of had to come up with a makeshift... Um, I had to come up with a makeshift mic stand that's made out of a coat hanger. Yes, I'm that cheap. <laughs> and uh, I had to come up with a, a pop filter, which is made out of a cloth bag that I got from college. Yeah, my pop filter is like that too, and gosh, you and I can be best friends. <laughs> oh my I'm God. cheap as hell too. Really? <laughs> I, feel, I, I feel bad to be the only one using actual equipment here. <laughs> well, because you work professionally, you can afford it. <laughs> Uh, I, I wish I had money to kind of just go all out and get actual gear that, you know, I didn't have to cut. I, I got cuts on my hands trying to bend this coat hanger into a... <laughs> so, like, to be honest, uh, if you give me a chance, I obviously still use my, my actual equipment. But to know that you've actually been recording your stuff through a guitar hero mic, that baffles me. I just need to look at this mic, man. Yeah, we need to get one. And just tear it apart. Yeah, but the problem is for you guys, it's going to cost you about a thousand bucks. No, we're going to go to Australia and buy from Target. <laughs> yeah. Still, it's going to cost. It's, sorry, sorry. Still, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks just for the flight ticket. <laughs> we'll I'll order it then. <laughs> I have a bunch of friends there. I can just get them. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to the last two questions I have. Actually, just just before that, sorry. Uh, I forgot uh, to ask sorry. You. Okay. Um, in Mixcraft, do you use more virtual instruments or uh, do you record directly into Mixcraft? Um, okay, this this is my deal is that when it, when all my electronic stuff, when I do orchestral sounds or when I do electronic drums or anything, it's all in Fruity Loops. And uh, Mixcraft is kind of, it's just really easy for me to plug in a microphone or plug in my guitar and just go with that. So Mixcraft is for acoustic instruments or rock instruments and... Um, 3D loops is for electronic stuff. So you don't use the digital instruments in Mixcraft? Uh, no, I, I have absolutely no idea how to use them. <laughs> so do you like plug your guitar straight into your computer's mic port or something? Uh, yeah, because I've got this neat little jack that uh, works from a, a guitar size uh, plug to a 35 millimeter microphone jack. So um, I just go straight to that and I have a VST that gives it its little sound that makes it sound actually good, you know, like a amp uh, kind of sound. So, yeah, uh, guitar ring. Okay, last two questions. Uh, number five is, I noticed that you mentioned on your YouTube videos that you master tracks for other people. So, curiously, do you actually mean that you mix, engineer, or actually master them? Because these, these are three different things, as you know them. Well, I'll be honest that I did not know that there were three different things, but huh. um, Kuroshi and Metal Brony, um, off the top of my head, I really can't remember anyone else, but uh, I had to do stuff for Kuroshi, and then when I proved to be way too busy, <clears throat> way too, uh, he wasn't good enough for me, so um, he went over to replace her to ask for um, mastering and stuff. And, but basically, yeah, I was just... Um, making sure that his tracks didn't sound terrible. And that's all there was to it. Um, Metal Brony gave me a track, which was a parody of Ram Times America. It's called Equestria. Go check that out. So I'll give a link later. But um, when he gave it to me, it was like all the guitars were in the center and everything, and um, they weren't properly EQ'd and stuff. So right. I've, kind of, I've kind of learned tricks of the trade from my friend Cyril um, uh -huh. in, in making sure that um, basically how not to make songs sound absolutely terrible. <laughs> okay. Cyril, so, uh, is Cyril the Wolf? Yeah, Cyril. Yeah, that's him. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, uh, Mills, just so you understand, that's actually what a mixing engineer does. So that's uh, what you okay. do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because a master uh, is basically the last, the last, dead last thing you do when you release a track. And that's... Uh, that's when you get the whole track and you EQ the whole thing. So that's... Oh, oh okay. It's a, full, a fully vended project. There you yeah, go. that's a fully vended project where you do the last bit of EQ just before you let it out. Yeah, it's, it's meant for different media. Like if you want to put it on a vinyl or a video, you have to put different masters. So yeah, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so my last question for you is... Uh, this is 
on the top of my list of things to ask a musician. So, your biggest musical influence? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> do you want to hear my biggest influence uh, in terms of, of um, in the Bruni musician community or just biggest influence full stop? In general. Full stop. In full stop. General. Okay, Maybe full stop. It, ha- it easily has to be Avenged Sevenfold. Wow. Like, it, it's, actually, it's actually a joke that me and Kuroshi have is that every song I come up with sounds exactly like that. I'm going to come up with a few quick comparisons. Listen to Song for Twilight, then listen to Beast in the Heartland. Listen oh. to my upcoming songs, Crossing Pass and Consequences Paid, and then listen to Afterlife. Listen to my song, Emergence, then listen to Fiction. I somehow accidentally seem to rewrite Avenged Sevenfold a lot, and I kind of really <laughs> take after their guitar riffs, and I consider um, M. Shadows to be one of my favorite vocalists of all time. So, um, yeah, they have to be the biggest influence on my music. All right, right. that's pretty interesting, actually. <laughs> uh, for Bronies, who is it? I'll be honest, that's a lot harder for me to answer. It would probably have to be... Um, sorry? Brony fight the metal musician. Um, not exactly. I have. I'll be honest. I haven't actually heard uh, so much from him. But um, this is going to sound odd. But it's pro- it's probably going to be a mixture of um, Mike the Microphone and the Living Tombstone. Yes. First of the Living yes! Tombstone. <laughs> tombstone. Uh, tombstone fanboy. Yes. Can I continue, please? Oh, he's going to like that anyway. Uh, Tombstone purely because of all the different types of music that he does. I mean, he's he's done uh, dubstep, he's done rock, he's done all sorts of things. And if there's anything, I just have the biggest amount of respect for anyone who goes into more than one type of genre. Um, and you know, he has done a rock song before, as um, and he's done it as well as he's done a dubstep song before. And um, the fact that he just goes out there and does what he thinks sounds good. I mean, of course, um, with any musician ever, there's going to be songs that I can't see eye to eye with. But yeah, he he's a big influence in kind of, you know, do what you want to do and just be true to yourself. And Mike the Microphone, I kind of um, take after when it comes to rap. I mean, I, I'll, I'll admit that there are sometimes I kind of try to imitate his flow and everything because I'll, I'll say it right here. I, I, I legitimately think Mike Mike is the best rapper on the scene. Uh, yelling at Cats is going to come and scream at me for this, but yeah, um, I legitimately really like Mike the Microphone and I just like his attitude with his music is that he just kind of he just kind of chills with it. He's just really he's just a really chill, laid back guy. He's fun to hang out with and he's, he just, you know, can't Free. you know he's doing this for the, he's doing this for fun which is kind of what Bruni music should be we're inspired by ponies we should be having fun and you see a lot of people kind of turning this into their part time job and making sure it's their responsibility to make a song that gets on EQD and then you have people like um, Mike the Microphone for example and uh, Kuroshia that just kind of come up with songs hey today I want to do a song about Trixie and uh, he goes ahead and does that he's inspired by it and it's nothing but fun that's what it's supposed to be and nothing but respect cool oh, that's really cool I mean Tombstone's a really nice guy he's awesome Dark, he, he's a great guy he's also very terrible at serious Sam <laughs> Well, that's it for the questions. Anybody else got any other questions to add? Well, uh, as usual, I like to ask if Mel, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I keep pronouncing your name Mel's because Norman does it, and I read it as Mel's. Uh, it's all good. Um, how long has this show been going for? Um, no, as in like not this call, but like how long have you have you been around? Well, this show started in February to this year. Um. I think it was the second week of February or the first week. I... Oh, this year. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's not that's not too far off. Yeah, and I have to say it's been a wild ride getting here. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Mills. <laughs> okay. Anyway, on to the next topic, and the next topic is email time. As usual, we don't have any emails. Uh, why no emails? <laughs> Come on, somebody, please email us. It would be fun to read an email on the email topic. Uh, I'll email you guys at some point. Yay! Why don't you just go and read whatever's in the box? Like, you know, um, thank you for setting up your Twitter. Please click on the link below to activate your account. (laughs) Oh, 
<laughs> One day, maybe. Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. And you can reach the Twitter page at the MBS show, and you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I'm Emilia Daniel. You can reach me at King of Cuteness. I'm Daniel Anthony. You can hit me up at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Meals, you have uh, Twitter? Yeah, follow me at Meals93 because someone already took Meals. Hold yeah. on, you're younger than me? I am. You're born in 93? Yeah. God, I feel so old now. <laughs> I, I thought I felt old. I found out a lot of musicians are younger than me. <laughs> You're the youngest kid on the what? show right now. <laughs> You're the youngest kid on the show right now. Oh, yeah? Because a lot of musicians I found out are a lot younger than me. Omni Pony is like four years younger than me. Stormwolf is also like four years younger than me. Uh, Stable Free. Uh, God, the list goes on. But there's a lot of... Um, I also, it was also a big shock when I found out Yelling at the Cats was like two years younger than me. I'm like, wow, I'm an old man. I think Tombstone is also, I think, uh, a year older, isn't it? I think he's yeah, I think a year he's older. Like one or two year old, he, uh, one or two years older than me. I think his birthday was recent, a couple months ago. Oh. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Link can be provided in the show notes. If not, you can just search for us, the MBS show, using your iOS or iTunes on your computer. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been the Daniel. And I'm the other Daniel, the Daniel Anthony. <laughs> I'm Mills. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. bye. Listen to my words for I forget again Promised you my love and this would never end But your duties have taken you Girl, I'll send you all my feelings through this I'll so wait for you round the bend Listen to my words for I forget again Promised you my love and this would never end But your duties have taken you Girl, I'll send you all my feelings through this I'll so wait for you round the bend Sorry, I'm a bad and straight Why I don't believe
Tombstone's a really nice guy. He's awesome. Yeah, he, he's a great guy. He's also very terrible at Serious Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Serious Sam, did you know about the Red Scorpion in Serious Sam 3? You mean the one that he failed to even notice was around? Um, yeah, I think he was, he was in one of the earlier levels, I think. I no, nah, the Red Scorpion is a... Uh, how, how do I put this? It's an anti-piracy thing. Oh? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um, no, I remember um, reading that on Did You Know Gaming on Tumblr. Ah, oh, that Tumblr. And it Tumblr. was like, um, you know, he's an anti-piracy thing and he's overpowered and he won't let you get past the game or something like that. The thing is, the developer knows about people pirating the game. So they make this one thing in the game where if you pirate our game, you sure you can play the game. No problem, you can play the game. But the thing is, if you pirate our game... We're going to send out a red giant scorpion who has got mode on and infinite ammo, hunting you down. Uh, I, I, I love when game developers do that. I remember GTA 4 on the PC had a drunk cam 24-7. <laughs> I, 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 I actually... Because um, you, know, you know how in GTA 4 you can... Uh, get drunk, yeah? Get, Roman will say, hey, cousin, let's go get drunk. And you, you'll go get drunk and um, Nico will just all over the place and the camera will go all shaky and everything yeah, yeah. on the PC version if you pirate it uh, that's exactly what happens and I actually remember pirating it and the cuts were just going shaky and I'm like what's going on <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a crack copy <laughs> I'm not sure we should talk about crack on the show no that's good, just gonna uh, be yeah, out no, piracy piracy harms legitimate consumers remember this kids yeah and the, the sad part, sorry uh, Mel's the sad part is it's gonna be edited out <laughs> 